right, so these are the instructions on how to do the cover for the Chaps mini album. You can choose to decorate the cover if you want, if you don't want to get involved in this lengthy, tedious cover, but it does have a really cool element to it. Um, so, so you've seen it, here is what it looks like. What it basically is, is four layers of sort of like a, a box that's open on the back and each layer has a uh, decorative paper on it. Now you can do it out of uh, black cardstock. I don't have any left from my package of 25, so you might want more. I was considering doing it out of the uh, blue cardstock that I uh, chose with the kit, but I didn't have enough to do all four layers. And here's another thing. You don't have to do all four layers. You want to do this outside layer because it, it covers the book, um, but you don't have to do the, the fourth layer or even the third if you don't want. I mean, you could do the first and the third, whatever you want. And then of course, we're gonna add in different uh, decorative elements inside. Um, and here's another thing, if you're making the book and it's, let's say it's a heritage book or it's, it's about somebody, you know, put the photo inside. I'm just having some decorative paper inside right now, but you can use that to put a photo inside or even a shaker if you want. Um, all right, so it is made with four separate pieces of cardstock You'll also need some chipboard. I just have some scrap chipboard. This is about five eighths. Is that right? Eh. It's um, actually nine sixteenths. It's a little bigger than a half inch. A half inch will do. Um, I Just so the uh, cover won't get scrunched down. Um, let me tell you the, the different sizes that you will need. So the first layer is, okay, um, before we get into all of the measurements, I just want to make a correction. Layer number one, the measurement is actually going to need to be eight and a half by 10 and three quarters. I said eight and a half by 11, that is not correct. Eight and a half by 10 and three quarters. So I'll refer to it later in the video. Just keep it this measurement and everything else is the same. So actually when we score the eight and a half by 10 and three quarters, we're going to score at half an inch and at one and one eighth on all four sides. So just rotate it, half an inch, one and an eighth. Half an inch, one and an eighth, and one more time. The second layer is seven and an eighth by nine and an eighth. And I'm sorry, the third layer is actually five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And the fourth is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So let us grab our scoreboard. Layer number two, which is seven and an eighth by nine and an eighth. You're going to score at a half and one. half, whoops, what am I doing, and one, one half, and one, one half, and one. Layer number three, which is five and three quarters by seven and three quarters, you're going to score at a half and seven eighths. One half, and seven eighths. There's not as much of a step down between layer two and layer three, but it still has a little bit of a step down. Half and seven eighths. And layer number four will score at half and three quarters. So here there is just a one eighth of an inch of a step down. Now, don't fold yet. Don't burnish on the score lines yet. 
we're going to first um, cut where we need to cut. So the half inch is what's going to go down flat on the surface and the, the next layer is going to be the height of our um, box. We're going to use these tabs on the side to help adhere everything. So this tab, this little square in the center of everything, so if it's a tic-tac-toe board, that, that center square, it was always Paul Lind, if you guys know what I mean. Um, we're going to keep that one. We're not going to need this. We're not going to need this. We're not going to need this. So for all three, all three, all four corners, we're going to be getting rid of those outside ones. But we're also going to cut it at a bevel. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to slight bevel from, from this score line to that second score line. And I'm going to cut a little pie shaped piece out of it. And I'm going to bevel this up to that second score line, and then I'm going to cut this off. So I get rid of those two squares. And then I'm going to cut this a little bit to the inside of that score line. So we have lots of opportunity to do it again. I'm going to cut up to that score line. And there, now I'm going to miter here up to that score line. And we're cutting this off because we didn't need those two and we're going to cut this also. All right, and I'm going to just continue to go around and do the same thing. All right, does that make sense to you? So up to the score line, cut it a miter, cut it a miter, and cut this off, and this comes off. All right, so we're going to do all of those the same. It gets a little tedious when you get to number four because they're all teeny tiny. I'm also going to grab at this point some score tape, and I am going to put it on this little flap that is showing. Just going to cut it. And then I'm also going to put it on this outside um, tab. So this little tab and here. And I know you, I normally would, no, I wouldn't normally cut it. Sometimes I will cut it with the scissors just so it looks nice and neat. But there are so many here to do. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So let's do all four of those and then we'll continue back. I will do them all quickly on camera. So if you're not sure of what's going on, you can see it. All right, so at some point, go through and just burnish down all that score tape, but don't burnish on your score lines. All right, now what we need to do is, so I've cut, first of all, this is uh, heavyweight cardstock. I use that for the largest piece. So this is six and a half by five, four and five eighths. Probably should have been six and a half by four and a half, but six and a half by four and five eighths. The next size is three and five eighths by five and five eighths, two and three quarters by four and three quarters, two and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I cut some of these out of 
chipboard because what we're going to do is center these on here. Let's start with the largest one because that's easier to view. Okay. So can you see? Yeah, you can pretty much see it. So we're going to center this on here. Now I'm going to use my ruler, especially on this bigger one, just to make sure I have room. The way I figure out how much it is is I put this up, I uh, measure this, and then I divide that in half. That's one and five eighths, so it's going to be, or actually if we do it this way, it's going to be um, oh, well, yes, one and five eighths, so divide that in half, and it's going to be uh, one, a uh, half and two and a half eighths, so that will be 13 sixteenths. So I know that this is going to be 13 sixteenths from that last score line. Now, if you want to just eyeball it, that's okay. Worse come to worse, if it doesn't look perfect, you just um, add some uh, little features. Now, what I also like to do with this is take some ATG. You could use glue. You don't need anything permanent because it's just going to sit on here. And this is our little template. Okay, so that is on there. Then I'm going to take my X-Acto and I'm going to cut this. Take your time. I have a new blade on here. So if that's what you need to do, go ahead and do that. So now I've got my hole in here. So let's do that with the other ones. Number two. So this is, let's see, I've already done that with this one, with my test one. I'll pull that off. Three and five eighths by five and five eighths. I'm just going to eyeball this one. And we're going to cut. Next one is two and three quarters by four and three quarters. Incidentally, if you don't have dies, this is a great way of cutting a, a rectangular hole or square out of the center of something. All right, and then number four, two and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now we can put these aside. We're still not burnishing on these yet. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make a frame, let me show you my example, to go on the top. Now choose whatever you have out of your stash, but so it's going to be like this. It can be as wide or as big as the outer dimension of this and then just about uh, an eighth of an inch smaller than our frame. So let me get everything in place and then we'll cut some pattern paper. 
Okay, we are going to make the frames out of the decorative paper. I know there are better methods and they involve lots of math and I'm not mentally prepared to do that. Figuring this out was as much math as I want to do. I am taking some ATG. If you have some um, uh, temporary adhesive, that will do the trick. I'm going to center this piece on here as best I can. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and take my pencil and draw a line. If you want to make things easy, you could just cut this out right now. But I like there to be a little bit of border on the, uh, so you see a little bit of the black showing on the outside here. So to cut this frame, I want to come in about a sixteenth of an inch. I mean, you can use whatever measurements. I'm just going to go about a, Uh, somewhere between a sixteenth and um, an eighth. You could do whatever you want. If you like a larger border, use an eighth. So I'm eyeballing it. That's the line. Actually, if I bring this up and show you, it might help. So there's the line. I know it doesn't help that this paper, let me do it on this side. This paper has uh, more than just that. So I'm just going to put my ruler a little bit away from it and cut outside of that line. It is not going to be perfect. But nobody's going to know that it's not perfect. And if you get any areas, if you slip or uh, do too much of an overcut, we're going to add things inside this tunnel card and uh, you could cover it up. So there is our little frame, which is going to sit nicely showing some of our black cardstock all around. So I will glue it, uh, and I'll probably ink it a little bit, and then I'll glue it. But we're going to do that to all the rest of the layers. We're also going to cut cardstock, or not cardstock, pattern paper, to go on the outside. So just like that. Okay, so here is my top piece, and I want to be clear on the steps that you should take. Uh, first of all, you should know that I am inking around the edges. For the top layer only, you ink around the outside perimeter and the inside. The other ones, you don't need to do the outside, you'll just do, need to do the inside. Um, go ahead and adhere this to the cover before you put it together. Adhere the frame and adhere the sides. Then go ahead and adhere the chipboard. So here's my frame. And I'm using liquid adhesive for this. You could use score tape, but the reason I'm using the liquid adhesive is, number one, this uh, paper from Country Craft Creations works very well with art glitter glue. It, it holds like a dream, but also it gives you a little bit of wiggle room so you can get it perfectly centered. The top layer is the most important. After you get this one, uh, the rest, I mean, they're important, but you've got a lot more wiggle room to get those. So 
So that's pretty good. I've got uh, an even border all around it. I'm going to turn this over and burnish. And then I'll add my little side pieces. Yes, I know I already put one side together and I shouldn't have. It's one of those do as I say, not as I do things. So there's that one. And I've already inked around the edges of these. I am not worried about matching the patterns. That is not, not even on my radar. I don't think it'll make much of a difference here. There's that, and then this one. Love this pattern, don't you? The, the bright yellow gold contrasting with the browns and the blue. Beautiful cobalt blue. Okay, now I'll go ahead and add my chipboard on the inside. And again, I'm just doing it for the outer one uh, just because I don't want anyone to crush it. You don't have to. It's probably, oh, wait a minute. No, before we add the chipboard, we've got to close it up because that's where the adhesive is and it'll be more square. So I've loosened that score tape on the little tab. Yeah, I know I have a little white piece there. Loosen up, take off the backing of the score tape. Take off the backing of the score tape and then add my little piece to the inside. This is a little bigger than I want it to be. actually easier now that it's all put together because now I can use the, the my surface it's getting nice and strong now because I know I'm going to have the layers of chipboard I'm finding I'm going to have to cut this down again you'll you'll see what I mean if you use the chipboard just um just dry fit it before you put it on Okay, all right, and then we're not, again, we're not going to adhere this yet. We'll do that after we get the other pieces inside it. Well, I suppose we could, but I decided I'll do that. It's nice and strong. I like, I like the weight of it. So that is how we'll do all of the others. So go ahead and put the Cut the um, frame. You don't have to worry about if it's on exactly the outside edge because you're not going to see the outside edge of it. That's why you don't have to even ink it. Just make sure the inner edge is what looks good. All right, we're going to put this all together. This piece is six and three eighths by eight and three eighths. The intention of this is this is going to be glued onto the front cover but this is going to be our base so we have something to work with. So I cut this out and I'm just going to put it here. I know that'll work because it's smaller than what our first item is. So I am just going to simply add some glue and glue 
pieces. And again, as I said, if you have a photograph that you're going to make this book about, you can certainly use that. So there is that. Now, I've made this first one, but I'm not going to put it down. We have to get everything corresponding first. So this is the first and the third. So let's, let's close this up. Looking for my bone folder. So I'm going to burnish these again. I'll turn this over and let's burnish on all of the fold lines. If you burnish first, it just makes it easier to fold and everything goes nice and neat in the place you want it to go. Okay, and then we have to fold these tabs in. And I'll peel off the backing on these little tabs, not the ones on the half inch piece, just these little ones. Note to self, don't do nails before you do a tutorial. It messes things up. But this boom folder works nice for that. Okay. Okay, so now this will come. I'll make this at a right angle. This is probably the only one I can burnish like that. Oh, maybe. All right, right angle. No, oh, I can do that. Peel off backing. Come on. These will go in to the right angle. Okay. Burnish all those down. All right. We have all of these little boxes made. Let's take a look at how they're going to all come together. First of all, I'm going to take the largest one, put this inside, this inside, and that inside. Once they're inside, I suppose you can go ahead All right, we can go ahead and peel off the backing and put all these together. Now it's gonna be hard to burnish this down. There we go. Because there's enough wiggle room to um, put them inside each other. That's what I was worried about. That's why I didn't wanna do that too soon. But I think we're okay with these.
Now in this case, you could also use it adhe liquid adhesive besides your score tape. All right, I'll get all this done and we'll put it together. All right, it's time to fish or cut bait. I'm actually going to take off my uh, fine tip because I want some glue to go down on here. I want a good strong bead of glue. I don't want little ones because I don't want it to dry. I want to be able to have time. And what I plan on doing is turning it upside down and putting it down. Now I realize I don't need the largest one. This one I have room to do later. Can I do just these two small ones? Nope, I need all three. So I'm going to add glue to these and then I am going to turn it upside down and center it on here as best I can. Oh, something else I noticed is I did not have to put this down first. I could put it after, I could slip it underneath, you know, when it's turned the right side. So, um, so just a, a note on that. All right, I'm gonna get these all straight. This is the scary part. See how it gives a good bead of glue? as opposed to skinny pieces if you take off that top. Alrighty, let's do it. Alright, I want to make sure this outside piece is centered so I can put the biggest one on. And that's good. And let's get this next largest one centered and then the smallest one. All right, actually that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. We've got an even border all around. I can burnish this Turn this over. Well, I can't burnish that, so just pushing them down at the edge. And actually, that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then this one will fit without a problem. This will go over it. So here I can again add some more glue. just a tiny bit of the blue cardstock showing all around. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I don't want to move it too much because it's still going to dry. But it looks pretty even. And even if it's not perfect, you know, you're not going to notice because we're going to add different things inside. So I have fussy cut out some different elements from the papers, from all of my scraps. Um, and some, I, I put them on some of the heavyweight cardstock and glued them down real well and then cut it. Uh, the reason I did that is because I wanted to add some extra strength and also it added a little extra border. So for instance, if I put this here, you won't see that little black border, but it'll give a little more room to glue. So now I will 
this is big so I sort of feel like it needs to go down at the bottom I've got this cigar box so that can go up here it's got to go on this side because well, I guess it could go over there but I like that it's open and sort of faces this way so that'll be there and we'll we'll hide it inside there now my motorcycle is facing this way so I would definitely put it on this side I will put it there centered I've got a little um, bourbon maybe in a glass do I want any down at the bottom? I don't. I'm going to put it down to the the um, smallest one just because it's a very small piece. And then I have a lot of these gears. So these gears, again, I put them on some heavyweight cardstock and I fussy cut around it, which is lots of fun with these gears. But I think it adds a nice touch. So these will go... Just around the outside, wherever I feel it needs a little more oomph. There's a little piece of paper that ended up in there. Don't want that. And I had to cut some blue ones because these are all yellow. I didn't want yellow. Oh, and actually this one is too close to there. All right, let me glue. The other thing about adding the heavyweight cardstock is you don't want this to sort of sag you don't you want to make sure you put it on some cardstock because you don't want it to you know bend down over the course of years because it will humidity will affect it so that is the other reason to use some uh, heavyweight cardstock so there's that our little motorcycle We'll go here. And our little glass. We'll go here. See, that's where I say, if you mess up on the corners, um, you can cover them. You know, sometimes you'll have overcuts on the corners, but you definitely can cover that. All right, I've got three gears on that side, so I'm going to need to put some on the other side. But let's glue them down. And I have these guys. Do we want to layer that like that? Just to so show some dimension. Put this one down here, maybe. I sort of like that down there on a another level yeah this one I did not put on cardstock it was sort of was an afterthought but I knew that I was going to uh, put it lower now this is on cardstock and I feel like I want to break up all that yellow can I put this one here is that too close to this I think it is I'll put it on a layer below I'm okay with that. I still have a lot on the left side and I need more on the right side. There's that. Oh, how's that? I sort of like that. sort of continues this gear. And then I have one more. Do I need 
need something over here. Yep, I like it. So what do you guys think? It adds a nice, interesting uh, cover for our mini album. And again, you put a photo in here, it, it would be fabulous. So I pulled out a couple of photos. This is my husband's uh, grandfather and dad. I'm not sure who it is. Anyhow, a couple of people. Um, I don't want to cut it down. I really shouldn't even be bending it. But you get the idea. Wouldn't that be cool? Nice old photo. Um, this one is not an old photo, but it's a photo of hubby. We were hiking. This was last year. It was out west. Every other year we'll do either the east coast or the west coast. So look at that. Wouldn't that be fabulous in there? I mean, the coloring would work. So, I mean, I could have made the photo bigger, but I put it, I printed two long photos on a four by six photo. Anyhow, there is the cover. I, I think you can get a good idea of different things you can do using this tunnel kind of cover. So I wanted to show you that. That is how to make the tunnel cover for the Chaps mini album. Don't forget the other parts of the video are linked in the description box. It's all in a playlist. You may choose to do this. It was pretty fiddly, but uh, the effect is really cool. So that's what I have to show you today. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day.